Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 27th of January 2020 and the time has just gone 11.55 GMT. And basically there's only one story in town, or one major story in town. Uh, and unfortunately the coronavirus situation appears to be getting worse. The situation in China is particularly bad where unfortunately uh, at least 80 people have passed away from the virus and more than 2,700 infections have been confirmed as well. So the rate at which uh, this health crisis is spreading has really alarmed markets. And it's obviously not just in China, but that's where the uh, the epicenter is. And the kind of fallout on European financial and mar- European stock markets has been essentially um, anything that is has somewhat of a connection or exposure to China is feeling uh, is feeling the the brunt of the pain. So if you look at uh, mining companies, uh, Anglo American, BHP, BHP Billiton, um, Rio Tinto. Uh, we've seen heavy sell-offs in, the, in iron ore and in copper. We've seen a large fold in underlying oil market. So BP, Royal Dutch Shell, Tonne Oil, they're in the red. We've also seen anything in the travel sector. So long-haul airlines, Lufthansa over in Germany, KLM, um, International Consolidated Airlines Group, the parent of British Airways, Aer Lingus, Iberia, uh, they're all in the red. Hotel groups are lower. Luxury brands are feeling are getting hit as well. So companies like Burberry, LVMH, um, and the likes high-end European luxury brands, uh, including Remy Quantro, who have large, who who uh, who who have um, seen large, um, large revenue rises come from China in recent years. They're all been hit. So it's very much a healthcare story is across the board. Uh, what we're seeing on top of that as well, we're seeing a move out of equities into assets. Um, such as just gold that are deemed to be uh, that are deemed to be low, lower um, lower um, lower risk. Bit of movement, uh, but we have seen a bit of dollar yen is a bit lower, so so there's a bit of yen buying going on. Not a massive amount, but nonetheless, uh, it's, it's essentially kind of one story that has multiple kind of um, tentacles uh, and, and multiple um, ways of kind of fanning out is is what's uh, driving the financial markets today. Uh, so what I'll do now, as always, is take a quick look at the week ahead article. I'll run through that, and then I'll look through the major stocks, currencies, and commodities. Uh, so taking a look at the week at the week ahead article, if you go to cmcmarkets.com and under insights and under news and analysis, you'll be able to find the article. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have the UK CBI um, dis- uh, dis- distribute and uh, dis- distribute tra- uh, trades survey. Distribute, apologies, distribute trade survey. Um, that's going to be particularly important. Keep in mind because we have the Bank of England update um, the meeting on Thursday, which we'll be mentioning in a second. Uh, on uh, Tuesday, we have Q1 figures from Apple. We have fourth quarter numbers from Boeing. On Wednesday, we have the update with the interest rate decision from the Federal Reserve. And to be honest, I'd imagine it's fairly, it's going to be fairly, I'd imagine it's fairly uninteresting. Uh, the US economy is in decent shape. Unemployment is is, is, a, is a kind of you know is, is extremely low. Wages have cooled ever so slightly, but they're still like comfortably above inflation. And more importantly, recent updates we've heard from the Federal Reserve at the back end of 2020, 2019 rather would suggest that given that they had three interest rate cuts in the second half of 2019, it seems like they're fairly content to sit in their hands. And any economic indicators we've seen uh, in, re- in the last few weeks or even say a month or two. As is fairly respectable, to say the least. Uh, Q2 figures from Microsoft. Keep an eye out for cloud technology. That's that's a that's, that's becoming a bigger part of their business, and it's a very popular industry. Um, we have Q4 numbers from Tesla. Uh, no pun intended, but they've been their share price has been driving higher recently. Um, of, well, the the share price has set some uh, some records in the last week or so. Um, I say just been the phenomenal kind of move to the upside in Tesla. You know, keep an eye out for future guidance because, you know, we have seen kind of companies take share prices take off like this before, and all of a sudden people have very high expectations, and if those like, if those high expectations are matched by optimism uh, from the company, you can lead to a, a sharp turnaround. Uh, on the Thursday, we also have third quarter numbers from BT. Thursday, we have full full year figures out from Roll Shell. 
and probably the most probably possibly the most important update of the week it's going to be the Bank of England interest rate decision. Um, this time last week or just 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 a while about ten days ago there was somewhere in the region of a you know there was a seventy five percent chance uh, there was a fairly high chance circa seventy percent chance of an interest rate coming interest rate cut being factored in from the Bank of England. Uh, that kind of the latter half of last week we had some very respectable unemployment numbers. Um, and, and on top of that, uh, wage numbers were decent as well. We had an update from the uh, from the CPI that was wasn't amazing, but it was a step in the right direction. Uh, and with that, we did see a tapering off um, of those of those interest rate in both of the probability of a rate cut back to around 50%, circa 50%. So it's cool for a 7% chance of a rate cut to a 50% chance of a rate cut. So we're still, you know, it could happen. Um, also keep in mind if we look at the Flash UK manufacturing services and PMI reports from Friday just gone. You know, both the, the services had a nice, decent enough pick up, and manufacturing, even though it wasn't too impressive, it was an improvement on the previous month's final reading. On Thursday, we have fourth quarter growth figures from the US, and on Friday, we have Eurozone CPI numbers. My apologies, we have the Flash Eurozone CPI numbers. Um, just uh, start the ball rolling now with the major indices, starting off with the FTSE 100. So, in the middle of the month, the FTSE was at a multi month high, up around levels last seen in the summertime, and now look, we are. So, we've had a, sh a fairly sharp sell off in, in, the last, in the last few sessions, fairly aggressive move to the downside. Uh, we're currently trading around 7,420, there, thereabouts, just south of it. If we do look to press on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average, and that comes into play at 7370. Uh, we can see in a few occasions in the last, in the in recent months, that metric has acted as, you know, well, a combination of both resistance and also support. So if the metric has been important in the past, it also makes it more likely it'll be so, it'll be important in the future. We can also see that it's almost, you know, basically converges. With the 200 day moving average, this red line here. And the 200 day moving average is viewed by some traders as a fairly decent metric or gauge of how strong or weak a market is. If you're above it, the market's strong, and if you're below it, the market's weak. So um, this, this zone here could act as support to further to further move to the downside. And even if you go below that, we could be looking at targeting 7,300. Once again, we saw some consolidation in that price, price area in around late October and November. Um, we really would need to be kind of heading back up here and clearing 7,500 before we can begin to think, or oh, maybe the uh, the fear, the the recent the recent downtrend has come to an end. And should that be the case, then we need to be looking at taking out the late January high here. Uh, and then if you go beyond that, we can then be look, and then we can be, we can then become more confident of the wider upward trend uh, of the last few months is in play, is back is back in play. We'll take a look at what's going on in Germany. Germany is coming in from a fairly high, uh, from a high starting point. Uh, only last week we saw the the, uh, the DAX um, register a fresh all-time high, only for the market obviously to move uh, aggressively lower today. So we can see here that it's pretty much on the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, and that comes to the play in at 13,280. Uh, we're, we're currently just south of that, so we're there thereabouts. If we do see further losses from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone down around here. It's somewhere in the region of around 12,900, there, thereabouts. We can see that that area acted kind of as, as a consolidation zone in October, and a few occasions in that general region, maybe just between, say, 12,900 and um, 12,969, that zone there. Uh, we have seen that area act as support in the past, so it makes it more likely that it will be important in the future. Uh, we really would need to be kind of retaking 13,500 before we look to kind of think that, okay, maybe the downward trend has come to an end. And then if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the record highs uh, in around 13,640. It's a fairly similar situation with the US markets, whereby not that long ago, they're at all-time highs, and then they've Suffered a, suffered a fairly uh, a fairly sharp decline uh, between Friday session and also today as well. But keep in mind, you know, we've had pretty big losses in the last few trading sessions. 
and yet we're still comfortably above the 50 day moving average. So I'll give you an indication of how how strong it looked. Some would, some would say strong, some would say how overstretched US equities were in advance of this. Uh, so if we do press on lower from here, and we can look head below this line here in around 28,500, uh, we could be looking ahead towards this blue line, the 50 day moving average, and that comes into play at 28,418. So this zone could act as support for further losses. We can if you stretch our um, chart back to this area here. We can see that back in uh, back in October, on a few occasions, the 50 day moving average provided support. So it could be important again in the future. We really we need to be kind of taking out say 28,800, um, and then if we go beyond that, we could then be looking up towards 29,000, big psychological number. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting. Uh, the all-time highs of somewhere in the region of 29,400. In moments like this, obviously the situation appears to, you know, is clearly getting worse in China and and also around the world. But it's in moments like this, traders, it's often worth worth your while taking stock of, of where we've come from and how much how much stock markets have rallied in advance of this. So. It's you know I know it's very easy to say when you're in the thick of it going just keep a cool head and take a look at the wider view but the lot the wider trend here I'm not looking at the S&P 500 is still very much to the upside so it's it's obviously difficult you know should sentiment change when can we see a turnaround if we do see a turnaround in the near term but just keep in mind market markets were exceptionally strong in advance of this and like I said we've had a couple of large sell-offs in the last couple of sessions and yet we're still nowhere near the 50 day moving average on the this blue line here on the S&P 500 so things are very clearly strong in relation to the uh, US market so if we do press on lower from here we're currently in around 3248 if we press on lower from here we could look at retesting the 50 day moving average at 3204 if we do move to the upside we head back up towards the 3300 mark and if we go beyond that we could then be looking at retesting the all time highs I'll take a look at the uh, the pound versus the US dollar. As I mentioned, we have this week we have the interest rate decision from the, the Federal Reserve and Bank of England, and the latter, the Bank of England one, is going to be far for, as far likely to be the more exciting of the two. So the broad view is that the pound has been pushing higher against the US dollar for the last few months since since September. We're holding nicely above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. Which comes into play in around one spot 3050, and, and if you continue to hold above it, it's likely that the kind of wider upward trend will continue. So if we press that higher from here, we could be looking at targeting one, 30, one spot 32, and a move beyond that could take us up towards one spot 3284. Uh, if you do move drop below the 50 degree moving average, we could look at heading back towards the psychologically important one spot 30 area. Uh, and if you go below that, if you're like you're heading down toward this zone here, down around one spot 29. We can see that we saw some consolidation in that area in late November, and even when it sold off in late December, it didn't even get us quite as low as 129. So a break below one spot 29 would uh, would could point to further losses. Take a look now at euro dollar. To, to be fair, it's been fairly boring uh, for the last few months. But it's been a, got a bit more interesting recently because it seems that the, that the kind of the kind of the medium term upward trend appears to be coming to an end. We had a multi month high here in early January, beginning of the month, and then we have a lower low, a lower high, and a continuation of lower low. So we're pretty pressing lower. We're seeing a steady increase in negative momentum. So the downward trend in the market is being confirmed by the steady increase in, in, in negative momentum. So it appears that the bears are in control. We're currently trading at one spot 1024. If you press on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting one spot 10. And if we break below, say, this area here in at one spot 0980, it could look it could set us back down towards the 109 zone down around here. Uh, if we do move to the upside, uh, support could be found, resistance rather, could be found in this blue line here, the 50 to move the average in it just, just south of one spot 11, uh, one spot 10, oh, one spot 1097. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting then the uh, the mid January high in at one spot 11.72. As I mentioned, um, 
oil has had a quite a sizable move to the downside. China is the largest importer of oil in the world. The fear is that the health crisis that, that unfortunately China is going through could have a, a negative impact on economic activity. Uh, so with that, we're seeing a fairly sharp sell-off in the oil market. So you know, you can see here that we're let, we're falling back to levels last seen in about October, mid-October. So give you an indication of how steep the sell-off has been. Now, if you take a look at this trip, if you draw a line between the lows of early October and the lows of mid-October, you get this line along here, which also get, which also was acting as support. It was a was acting as a nice um, uh, trend line um, back. It, Back through uh, early, early, sorry, mid mid January, but we can see here because it bounced off on a few a few occasions. But we can see here once it finally had a, an aggressive set off through it, it kind of fell all the way through it. So, and it's not really a surprise that we had a large, we had a very bearish move, which took us solidly below the trend line, and then we've been pushing lower ever since. So, if we continue to press on lower from here, we could be like targeting this area here. Down around 51 dollars a barrel, or potentially down as low as 50.36. Any kind of rebounds in WTI uh, would need to kind of take out the head of door this area here. First of all, with the with the red line here is the trading moving average in at 57 spot 40. And if you, even if you do know, move beyond beyond that, what was the, with this trend line, which was acting as support, could not be acting as resistance. So we need to, we need to really kind of get back above that metric. You need to get back above that in around kind of 58, 85 there. That's 58 spot 85 there thereabouts before we kind of become confident um, of, of further gains on the horizon for WTI. That's WTI. I take a look now at Brent crude. Similar situation here. We've had an aggressive move to the downside in the past few sessions. We're at levels last seen in mid to late October. So we're clearly in, in, a, in a downward trend. If we press on lower from here, we could be looking at retesting this area here in around 56 spot 71. Any move to the upside could run into resistance from the utility moving average. We can see that it was acting as support for a bit uh, in the middle of the month, and then when eventually kind of had a size of break below, it kind of just really took off. So we could be looking at retesting. If you see any snap back, we could run, run into resistance in around 64 spot 17. And lastly, I'll take a look at gold. Gold has been a uh, beneficiary of the uncertainty in the financial market. So we're seeing metals like we're seeing oil fall, we're seeing stocks fall, we're seeing copper fall, we're seeing iron ore fall. fall. Um, but what, what we are seeing is gold rise, and this is where some money is going into. So the market's back up a level last seen in mid January, early January rather. This has been on the back of the Iranian tensions. So we're pressing higher here. We're currently trading around, around 1582. If the market continues to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the psychologically important $1,600 area uh, a metric. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting the highs of January in around 1611. If we do have a bit of a pullback, uh, we could find some support from this general area here in around 1560. And it's only really if you take a, have a size of break below this area here, uh, 1536, kind of the low of mid January. It's only really if I have a decent break below that, because then we begin to think, okay, maybe the upper trend has come to an end. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, that's all from me this week. Have a good trading week, and tune in next week. Thank you.